the head of the country's central bank floated the idea of dumping the greenback as the world's reserve currency, replacing it with an international currency. Thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. His vision for America's place in a new world order. Returning vets could be a risk to our nation. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance. I think the new world order is emerging. This is a hoax and a scam which is designed to transfer wealth and power from the private sector to the government sector and from the government of the United States to a world government. And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy government. Conspiracy theorists. They've, concerned, they've been crazy, but now they're, they're right. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or, that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. You tell us who they are. No. You know, financial terrorism. They have the ability to tweak the knob. I am proposing that the Federal Reserve be granted new authority. The ultimate goal of the carbon tax and the cap and trade is to destroy production. This energy tax is the largest tax increase in American history. We're actually creating a global warming police. So number one, they can come in, the federal government can come in and inspect your house and send you the bill. We're setting up a global warming Gestapo. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. I am fierce. And this is what I wear. Senator Barack Obama's presidential campaign is asking Missouri law enforcement to target anyone who lies or runs a misleading television ad. I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. The president, when he was in Europe last week, he met with the king of Saudi Arabia. He appeared to bow. President Obama today proposed something new, something called prolonged detention. Pre-crime is where people are arrested and incarcerated to prevent crimes that they have not yet committed. It's the World Wrestling Federation. It's the Washington Wrestling Federation. They put on this show that they're bitter rivalries, you know, villains, and they really don't like each other. But behind closed doors, they buddy up for a drink and make deals. Both the Republican and Democratic parties are owned by the same global elites. And on issues that matter to those global elites, they act as one. They've wrapped themselves in the American flag, and they've talked about preserving American heritage and principles, and all the while, they're working to merge us into a new world order where our sovereignty will be destroyed. We'll lose all connection with our American heritage. With Bush, you knew exactly what you were getting. It was, uh, there was no uh, uh, iron fist in, in a velvet glove, it was just the iron fist. Whereas with Obama, you've got the velvet glove and the iron fist. You know, a very sharp guy, very smooth, knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, for that reason, far more dangerous than Bush. <laughs> well, at the end of last year, I was willing to give Obama the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was premature to write this guy off. But now that he's been in office for a while, it's obvious that he is very tight with the Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan's on Wall Street, and he is extremely compliant and pliant to the wishes of the large banks, going back to the, what we saw with Robert Rubin under the Clinton administration, uh, changing laws in favor of the banks, and he's not doing anything to stop the banks. He's helping the banks continue to do what they were doing under Bush. So, in fact, he's just a continuation of Bush on the subject of markets and finance, which is the most important part of his policy right now. People who voted for Obama wanted real change and are getting platitudes, are getting a lot of nice talk, but nothing in the, in the way of concrete change is taking place. In this town, business as usual. There's one puppet master that controls the left, and there's a, a, the same puppet master controls the right. They control the Republican Party, and they control 
the Democratic Party. This is not a party issue. This is not a left-right issue. The question is, who should government serve? And it should serve the people. In fact, government is just a tool of the dominant minority that uses economics and government law to enforce upon the public various mandates. The right-left uh, paradigm in the U.S. and in, in U.S. politics is taken directly from the commercial world and the, the corporate world. In the business world, you have Coke, Pepsi, you have McDonald's, Burger King, you've got at and Verizon, you know, you've got duopolies. And a duopoly gives the illusion of there being some competition and some choice. And it looks a little bit better than a monopoly. So, for example, in communist Russia, if they had communist Russia red and communist Russia chartreuse, there would have been the illusion of choice and something akin to democracy in Russia. But they simply said, forget it, we're just going to go with red. In the U.S., they have this left-right paradigm, which, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't take them out of the, the, the hard, cold fact that there is no choice. There's no social justice. There's only one choice, which is to supply more rent to the rent seekers who have now taken the whole system hostage. We've seen the limitations on government whittled away. We have seen this erosion to the point where today it seems like nobody does care. And right now in Washington, D.C., we have seen a fall of the republic. If the United States doesn't have its Bill of Rights and Constitution, it doesn't exist anymore. It's just more real estate, more dirt. And that's what these global corporatists want. They want to completely dismantle the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and they're doing that right now. This is the fall of the Republic. Our nation is dying. We, the people that live in this fine country, need to stand up, get involved, and take the system back. It's the Bill of Rights and Constitution that we owe allegiance to, not to a political party, and not to politicians that wrap themselves in the red, white, and blue, while at the same time, they destroy everything that that sacred flag stands for. So in the old days, you used to have this globe that with 180 some odd countries, and a few of those countries had a lot of power, like the Soviet Union, and the United Kingdom, and the United States at various times. But today, you might better look at that globe and say that it's surrounded by huge clouds swirling around the planet. They know no national boundaries. They don't follow any specific sets of laws. And these are the big corporations. They basically control politicians around the world because they have all the money. And politicians always need money to get elected or to run their governments if they're, if they're not democratically elected politicians. They control the mainstream press, either through outright ownership or advertising budgets. They have massive amounts of lobbyists in Washington that have tremendous influence on our president and, and, and Congress. And they really are calling the shots. They form partnerships with the Chinese and the Taiwanese and the Tibetans, or with the Israelis and Arab nations, with Brazilians and Indians, with whatever country and whatever group of people has resources that they covet. And they, so for the first time in history, we really have this new form of a of an empire. Barack Obama is a puppet of the New World Order to bring in a World Bank, to destroy the economy of this country, and to bring in global governance. And no matter how likable the fellow is, we as citizens of this country need to stand up and say no. We have to stand up to preserve a republic here and a rule of law, which is under dire threat. We don't want to live under a world government of the corporations, by the corporations, and for the corporations. I don't want to believe it, and that's probably what holds me back on it, but I'm certainly seeing enough indication that it could be true. Absolutely, because they're always talking about Mexico and the United States and Canada ending up like Europe. And there's things done politically that seem to take us in that direction. And so I think it's incumbent upon all of us as American citizens to pay attention. This move to world government is not about roses and happiness and peace and in a better life. It's about enslavement.